Today I'm going to feature five herbs that help lower inflammation on the scalp as well as have antifungal and antimicrobial properties to help rid dandruff and dryness as well as improve blood circulation. So let's get into today's video. Hello my happy nappy crew, it's Nadia Nappy here and this week enters week 13 of our Ayurvedic hair challenge and this week we are focusing on scalp care. We're going to touch a number of factors as we mentioned in the beginning from scalp inflammation all the way to improving blood circulation on those hair follicles, improving hair growth. So let's get into today's video. First we're going to be making our scalp care tea. I'll be using the traditional medicines Echinacea Plus Elderberry Tea. You can find this also in my Amazon store. I'll be also adding the addition of neem. So let's get into making the tea and applying it to our hair. Alright so let's start by making this tea. I'll be using the traditional medicines Echinacea Plus Elderberry Tea. I'll be going in with two tea bags. Next I'll be adding in a cup and a half of boiling distilled water and give that a nice stir and let that sit for a minimum of 30 minutes. Now y'all actually waited for about one hour and I periodically stir within that time frame. And y'all, if you do not have this tea but you have the herb neem, neem is just as powerful and just as effective. But y'all know for this mixture, I will be adding in about one tablespoon of neem powder as well. I also let that sit for another hour y'all and the mixture became a nice dark greenish reddish color. Now I decanted that into the spray bottle that I'll be using for the week and on my hair. Then I also went in with one teaspoon of glycerin. If you do not have glycerin, I highly recommend using honey or even agave. You just need something that is humectant based that can help attract moisture to your hair. All right, you guys, and I'll be starting again this process with a pre-poo. Now, I'll be taking down my twists, y'all, just on camera for you guys and just showing y'all. So, you know, sometimes when you have your twists in for a while or you twist too tightly or I wrap the twist too tightly around the beads, it may be hard to unravel, but I do use the end of that comb to help separate the hair. All right, you guys, so let's jump into all the herbs that we're going to discuss today that, again, have so many benefits for the hair. So the first herb we're going to discuss is Echinacea. Now, echinacea is known for boosting your immune system, but it also has several benefits for the scalp. So some things that give it its medicinal properties is the flavonoids and polysaccharides. They actually create anti-inflammatory properties, which helps to soothe inflammation on the scalp and also aid in conditions such as dandruff, psoriasis, and eczema. It also has antimicrobial properties that help fight bacteria and fungus that grows on the scalp. As we learned in our video two weeks ago, that malassezia is a fungus that naturally lives on our scalp. So this really helps to manage our dandruff or any type of fungal infections. It also promotes blood circulation to the scalp, encouraging healthy hair growth. It has nice moisturizing properties to help alleviate dryness and itchiness. And for those who don't have the tea, I'll just jump right into neem. Neem is probably one of my favorite herbs if you're dealing with anything related to the scalp. Because neem has antibacteria, has antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties. And you guys, the nimidin in this oil actually makes a very powerful herb for bacterial infections and reducing inflammation and irritation on the scalp. The anti-inflammatory effects found in nimidin also help to soothe inflammation, reduce itchiness, redness associated with such conditions such as psoriasis and eczema. I use neem in every single one of my oils because it really aids in helping to really reduce some of my scalp flare-ups that I have with eczema. The next herb found in this tea is ginger. Now ginger contains a compound called gingerol which helps to promote circulation and improve blood flow and nourish those follicles encouraging healthy hair growth. It also has antioxidant properties which reduce oxidative stress and free radical damage to the scalp. It has anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial. It also has cleansing and clarifying properties which means it can help remove excess oil, dirt, and build up the scalp. Now I'll tell you about a few more herbs while I apply my Oatmeal Shampoo Bar to my hair, giving myself a nice cleanse. The next herb is yarrow, and y'all, I've been meaning to do a whole video on yarrow. It is an amazing herb with anti-inflammatory properties that help reduce redness, itching, and irritation on the scalp and deal with conditions like dandruff, eczema, and psoriasis. It also has antimicrobial properties due to its natural essential oils, azulene and camphor, which again help to combat bacteria and fungus. It is also a natural astringent when applied to the scalp, so it makes it beneficial for those who have oily scalp conditions. It also promotes blood circulation, nourishing those hair follicles and promoting hair growth, and can provide a soothing effect, alleviating itching, burning, and tenderness. 
And I'll tell you about a few more herbs. Well, I used my hibiscus and shea detangling conditioner to my hair and I left that on for three hours. The next herb is chamomile and y'all this herb has so many soothing effects. It can really soothe and calm that scalp especially when it's sensitive and irritated. It also has antimicrobial properties. It can also hydrate the scalp preventing scalp dryness and helps to maintain healthy hair growth preventing issues with flakiness and itchiness. It also adds a nice shine and luster to the hair. All right, so I ended up leaving this conditioner on for three hours because I fell asleep with it on. And then I rinsed, y'all. My hair felt really soft, light, and fluffy. So y'all, I hydrated my hair first with that scalp care tea. Y'all, I wanna make sure my scalp stays really hydrated this week. And I followed up with my O'Neill leave-in conditioner and sprayed that down the length of my strands. As well as my O'Neill twist cream. I plan to actually put my hair into large twists to stretch my hair for the style for the week. All right, y'all, so this is actually the next day. My hair is nice and stretchy, and I've already parted it into multiple sections. So I have a bang section here up top, and I'm gonna spin around for the back, and then I have my hair parted into three sections. Now, as y'all can see, these sections are not very even, and this works fine with my hair because it's dense and you really won't be able to see the parts. If you have fine or thin hair, you wanna try to make your parts as even as possible. I start with the bottom section and I just twist my hair very lightly. You really try to do only one to two revolutions per twist. I wanna create the most voluminous effect as possible. Now I repeat that with the second section. And then again with the third section up top. All right, y'all. Now, obviously, the third one I clearly missed pin. Don't worry, I'm going to fix it off camera. All right, but let's get into the bang section. Now, y'all, I'm going to divide my bangs in half and then twist them into two large twists. And then pin them over to the side for a kind of side swoop effect. Again, just pin your bangs however you like or however frames your face in the best way. All right, let me give you guys a voila, a final reveal. Y'all know I love that. Put on some makeup and earrings. Y'all, this is the style. Very cute, very simple. Just showing you that protective styles don't have to take a lot of time and can still be simple and elegant. Let me know what you think of the style. Will you be trying it for the week? Make sure you check out any of my other videos I have on Herbs for Dandruff posted on the screen. But that's it for this week. I'll see you next time. Bye.